Hey y'all, welcome back to Liam's Tips and Tricks. Tonight is part two of our expose on runes. I was actually meant to get this video out to y'all last night, but some things came up uh, and I had to go back and go through the video again and review the material, and I'm really glad that I did because I think I made some important discoveries about some of the runes that you'll see more towards the end. As always, uh, if you like anything else described in more detail, or if you have any other suggestions for uh, future videos, just drop me a comment below and I'll do my best to get to them as quick as I can. There will be at least two more parts to this video series. Tomorrow I will be posting about the resistance runes and the life runes. Uh, tonight we go over power runes in depth and how to use them effectively in combat. This is when we want to start deciding where we want to end up, which runes that we would actually prefer to have as our top tier S runes, um, obviously S plus or S plus plus, whatever we can get. Uh, a quick analysis of the, of the difference between a plus rune and a regular rune. The regular cri crippling rune has 60 attack, and if we look at its activation effect, Attacking a debuffed enemy increases crit rate by 3% for 5 seconds. Now if we compare that to our D plus version, it actually has an attack of 84, so it is an increase. And more importantly, attacking a debuffed enemy increases crit rate by 4%. When it comes to the difference between regular and plus runes, both the base stat as well as the effect is increased. Now, as far as effectivity of the runes, there's a lot of personal preference, as well as how you play personally. My first rune set, the one, two, three at the bottom. My first rune set I keep as my PvP set. My second set I keep as my PvE set. All right, let's check out these runes in depth. We're gonna look at each one in detail. Um, as far as its effect, and how to effectively use it and utilize the runes in actual combat situation. So first we're going to go ahead and start off with the pure PvE runes. The first one is the Swift Rage Rune. Basically whenever you kill a monster with a rage skill, it increases your attack speed by a certain percentage for 10 seconds. I did want to also note that we're going to kind of pass over the base attack amount as well as the percentage amount of the effects of these. And the reason for that is because they change and get better the higher grade that you get and obviously we're only looking at the starter runes. Just keep that in mind that the better the grade, the higher the quality, the more effect you get out of it. But the things that don't change are the combat effect. So with the swift rune, you kill a monster with a rage skill, increases your attack speed for 10 seconds. With the leech rage rune, when you kill a monster with a rage skill, you recover some of your hit points. So it basically heals you when you rage skill a monster. It is important to note that once the runes trigger, there is a cooldown timer that's associated with them. So if you don't get that effect every single time. For instance, if you have a swift rune and a leech rune, both equipped, say hypothetically you use four rage skills in a row and kill off four monsters, it's not going to refresh it each time, it's just going to trigger once, go through the effect, have a cooldown, and then once that cooldown timer is gone, then you'll be able to use the effect again. And it does actually show you that while you're playing, it will show a small rune icon, and once that timer goes away, then you can get the effect again. Here, we'll see it here in just a second, as we uh, kill one of these guys, or maybe four of them, three of them. Alright, as you can see, the effect timer is in the upper left-hand corner, and the rune cooldown timers are in the upper right-hand corner, right above your ultimate skill. There we go, both Swift and Leech have triggered. Swift timer is in the upper left there, and both of the cooldown timers for those skills are on the right. Now moving to the Falcon Rune. 
This is a PvP only rune. What this one does, as it says in the activation effect, attacking an airborne PvP opponent increases damage against airborne enemies for 5 seconds. Now in actual practice, in order to get this effect to trigger, for one, your enemy has to be knocked up into the air, either by a skill that you've used, or even a skill that one of your teammates has used, if you're doing team PvP or GVG. Then, the moment that you hit an airborne opponent, it will trigger this rune, and from that point on, for the next five seconds, you will do additional damage to any opponent who is currently in the air. And our next one is the Smite Crippling Rune. When you attack a debuffed enemy, it increases damage against debuff enemies for five seconds. So, in a similar fashion to the Falcon Rune, your opponent needs to be hit with a skill that has a debuff component to it. A debuff component is a movement speed debuff, an attack speed debuff, uh, or a defense debuff. Stun does not count as a debuff for purposes of these runes, which is an important side note. The only downside with this particular rune is that it only uh, function against debuffed enemies. So as long as that person has a debuff on them, and you hit them and trigger this rune, then any subsequent attacks on that player while they're debuffed uh, will deal extra damage. Rather similar is the Crit Crippling Rune, and with this one, when you attack a debuffed enemy, it increases your crit rate for 5 seconds. But, if you notice, it doesn't specifically say that it has to be a debuffed enemy to increase your crit rate for subsequent attacks. So what that means to me is that all you have to do is attack a any debuffed enemy once, and it will increase your crit rate against any target for 5 seconds. So because of that, because it actually affects a cr your crit rate across the board against any target, that makes this one significantly more powerful, in my opinion. It's beautiful. Alright, as far as my personal opinions, the Falcon Rune uh, for airborne PvP opponents is actually a wonderful rune for an assassin. Assassins have multiple skills that will knock people into the air, and you can hypothetically keep an opponent in the air for the full five seconds to get the most out of the Falcon rune. The archer doesn't really have that strong of a capability of keeping an opponent in the air. Um, they will keep an opponent in the air for a very short time, but it's hard to keep them in the air continuously. In my personal opinion, I think that the best bets with the Archer will be the Crit Crippling Rune for attacking a debuffed enemy increases your crit rate. That's, that's going to be your big one, in my opinion, for the Archer. That will be the best. Secondary, I would really consider going for uh, the Smite Crippling Rune and the reason I say that for these is because as long as you have skill set up on your archer, if you use any of them that have a debuff component to them, then you will be able to get both of those runes to trigger, and you can deal a lot more damage uh, quickly with the archer using those. Like I'm showing you here, the PvP Arrow Storm um, has a defense decrease. So if you use that in combination with those two runes I just mentioned, the two crippling runes, not only will the, their defense be decreased, but you increase your crit rate and you deal more damage. So you have a potential of doing a whole lot of damage with that particular skill, which obviously I need to uh, increase. And archers have a high attack speed and the arrows come out in multiple shots as I showed in my first Archer video, those multiple shots when you're standing next to a target, you have a possibility with each one of triggering a crit, so it has the potential of dealing a whole lot of burst damage. Just really quickly, when you're looking through your skills here, if you'll notice when you click on Aerostorm in either of the two PvE modes, 
PvE or co-op, it does not show that it has that defense debuff. So it's not until you actually swap it to either of the PvP modes that it show that the skills will show if they have a debuff. Like this one, the multi-shot attack speed decrease, but if you hit the PvE, that goes away. So the best way to check which skill does what is to go ahead and click on it while it's in uh, PvP and it will show you any of the debuffs like that. And that's actually pretty much it. It looks like the best bet for the archer. If you're looking for debuff skills, you're either going to uh, go for the multi-shot. Um, Aerostorm uh, would probably be the one that I would use. I mean, you could go Song of Wind for the movement speed decrease, that's not bad. And then, of course, you, you do want at least one stun skill, also. But that's those are the skills that you would use in order to trigger those runes. That's what I'm going to personally go for, and I'm going to... Uh, test out and play. Next video we're going to go ahead and hit up uh, resistance runes and everything that's associated with them and I'm actually going to be releasing that hopefully just within a few hours. And then subsequently a third one we're going to go ahead and do life runes also. I, In fact depending on how it goes I may just combine those two but the power runes are a little bit more in depth so I wanted to give you a little bit more to them so you would know how to effectively use them in combat. I really hope this helped out. If it did, go ahead and give me a like, subscribe for more content in the future, because I do have a lot more coming. Uh, feel free to share with anybody. Thank you so much for watching, and happy hunting. Ooh, got an A. Let's see what it is. Hmm. Oh my. Wow, I actually got an A plus PvP. Hallelujah.